I want to do a quick example talking through the basic quantum rules having to do with sequences and superpositions of, of states as we pass through some complex apparatus. So in particular, I'm going to do one of the most simple quantum systems that we know about, which is electron spin systems. Uh, electrons are spin one half, so they have any spin measurement along a given axis will give you their plus h bar over 2 or minus h bar over 2, and that's what these stern gerlach devices do. We're going to start out with a stern gerlach device oriented in the z direction, and we're going to just select the beam coming out of the plus z side of that. That will be our initial state for our later discussions. Uh, that plus z beam is going to feed into an x-directed stern gerlach apparatus. And, of course, the, schematically, that will send a beam out the plus x side and the minus x side. We're going to put in a fancy, unspecified recombining apparatus. It's probably just some stern gerlach devices upside down and things, don't worry about it. But it combines beams back together into a single beam that then goes into a z-axis directed stern gerlach device. And I want to know, given these, this initial state here, this be, initial beam of electrons in the plus z state here, what's the probability that I've got to come out plus z versus minus z in my final state? So that's what I've got in this story. And as a reminder, when I'm doing a single quantum measurement of electron spins, or anything really, if I start out in state psi, this is a ket vector psi in dirac Brockett notation, and I want to know what's the probability that I will measure that, that particle to be in state phi, what I do, I take my initial ket vector, my initial state vector, and I put the bra version of the measurement state, the final state I'm interested in, take that bracket, using our usual rules, and then to do the actual measurement, I find the absolute square of that. And that's how I find the probability of measuring phi if I started in psi. All right, that's the basic idea. For us, we want to hold off on doing that absolute square at the end, because that's really the measurement step. I want to build this thing in the middle. The bracket there is the quantum amplitude for that measurement, which is sort of the probability amplitude. It's sort of the square root of a probability. The key thing is that that has the potential to be negative or imaginary or whatever, whatever complex phase it might be. And so there's a possibility for interference and interesting quantum effects going on. All right, that's the story. So I want to look at this and see how I can apply the quantum sequence rule. How I take a sequence of steps along some path to build the quantum amplitude corresponding to one of several paths that my particle could take. So just for instance, I'm going to start with what I might call the plus x path. I'm going to start with my initial state here and follow it along the plus x path. It gets recombined. And let's just ask the question, how likely is it to come out the plus z state in the end? That's the path I'm going to ask about. To do that, I'm just going to start building this using the sequence rule. And my best example I can use is just to show you how to do it. I'm not going to try to give you rules. I'm just going to describe it. So I start. I build it from right to left, build the expression from right to left. I start with my initial state psi. That's my initial state ket vector. So that's my, my initial state. And it's state psi here. Oh, wait, it's not psi, though, because I've got a specific state. Uh, my specific state is plus z, because I'm coming out the plus z side. So that's my initial state. Now, the path that I'm considering, I consider them one at a time, is the plus x path. And so I have to start by asking, hey, are you, Mr. Initial Particle, are you in going to follow the plus x path? Bra vectors ask questions. So the bra vector plus x, when I put it here and form a bracket, basically ask the question, are you plus x? It's asking that question. We're not making a measurement yet, so we don't square it. We're, but it's sort of asking that question. If the answer to the question is yes, which we basically assume it is because we're following the yes path, then that means as it comes through that step there, I'm in the plus x state. So I'm going to put the ket vector for plus x as the next piece of my amplitude. Remember, I asked the question, so this, uh, this then says, yep, I am plus x. So that's what this ket vector says, and we follow that along, and then I get to this SGZ device, and now I ask the question, well, hey, are you plus z? 
And clearly I could have put this lower down, but And I asked that question along the way. That's how I build this, and that's the whole story because I've gotten to the end of my path. I could do the same thing for the minus x path. Let me do that over here. For the minus x path, same idea. The minus x path is the one that would go from my initial state here through the minus path back to recombine, and I'm still going to ask if it's plus z in the end. So you can see the deviation is spreading out is only along this, the, right after the SGX device. For the minus x path, I do the same thing. I say, okay, I start in the plus z state. I ask, hey, are you minus x? Since I'm on that path, yep, I am. So I'm in the, I'm in the minus x state now. That's my ket for minus x now. And then I say, well, are you plus z now at that point? That is the amplitude for my minus x path. I can just put those two together and see how that works. All right, so where does that leave me? I now have these two different amplitudes. I now use the superposition rule to put them together. And the superposition rule says that I add amplitudes, probability amplitudes, quantum amplitudes, and then take the absolute square to find the probability. Our author, Tom Moore, may have a more formal statement of that, but that's the idea. So to do that, then, to find the probability of starting in the plus z state here and winding up in the measuring plus z in the end, I add these two together. That tells me that the probability of measuring plus z is equal to the sub. What do I have? I have plus z with plus x, plus x with plus z. That was from this amplitude here. And I add to that this one, plus z with minus x, minus x with plus z. I add those two together, and then I take the absolute square of that sum. And that's how I get my probability. Now let's work out what this is. I, you can check at home what these quantities come out to be. I happen to know what they all come out to be, so I'm just going to put it there. Uh, the idea really is that the plus z is a 1, 0 vector in our usual SZ basis. Uh, the plus x is 1 over square root of 2, 1 over square root of 2. This is 1 over square root of 2, 1 over, minus 1 over square root of 2. You can check this at home, but I'll tell you, this bracket comes out to be 1 over square root of 2. This bracket comes out to be 1 over square root of 2. This is 1 over square root of 2, and this is 1 over square root of 2. And so the whole thing then adds up to be the absolute square of 1 half plus 1 half, which is just 1. There's a t absolute, every one of these will come out the plus z state. On the other hand, I could have asked what's the probability of being in the minus, of measuring minus z at the end. Let me write that down. For that, I would have done exactly the same story all along the way, except at the very end, instead of asking, are you plus z, I would have asked, are you minus z? So it would have looked very much the same, except my very last step would be the minus z. Plus x, plus z, plus, remember, I'm always asking, are you minus z? So that's, that's what I'd have instead for the are you minus z question. And again, uh, again, the only thing that changed was just I'm asking are you minus z at the very end, but the rest is exactly the same. Remember, the leftmost part of this sequence, of each sequence, is the final question we asked. So okay, now I can put it all together. Um, minus z with plus x, I happen to know, is 1 over square root of 2, and this is still 1 over square root of 2, 
minus t with minus x, this is the interesting one. This is minus 1 over square root of 2. And this one is minus x with plus c is still positive 1 over square root of 2. Those are my components. And so this one adds up to be the absolute square of 1 half minus 1 half, which is just 0. And that's good news. Our probabilities add up to 1. The probability in the end adds up to 1, and we're all set. So this is how, this is the simplest possible example of how this, the sequence and superposition rules for quantum mechanics lead to probabilities for recombining things like this. And no matter how many steps you had, all you have to do is just list every possible path the elector could take, or your more complicated system, every possible path it could take uh, along that sequence. Find the amplitude for each path separately, and then just add up the amplitudes before taking the absolute square to find the probability. That's the deal. It takes some getting used to, but mechanically it's a pretty straightforward process. You just go through step by step, and you'll get there in the end.